joining ESM. I am Ellie, and today I will be talking to you about an amazing convention called CUSCON. Let's go to Madison with the top stories. Orange County, Alexander O'Connell, has been charged with six counts of sexual assault. He pleaded not guilty and was released on unconditional bail. A representative of him says Alex is shocked by the allegations, which he denies, and looks forward to clearing his name in court. His upcoming tour has been canceled. Friday night at the Baldwinsville homecoming game, their superintendent went crowd surfing in the stands. Shortly after the game, Baldwinsville police reported that the superintendent was later arrested Friday night for driving while intoxicated with a blood alcohol level greater than 0.08%. He has been placed under administrative leave. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you would like to join DECA or are just interested in learning more about DECA, come to our first membership meeting on Tuesday, October 11th at 3.30 in the large cafeteria. If you have any questions or cannot attend the meeting, please see Mr. Anzalone in B4. There is a meeting for all interested in crew or Adam's family today at 3.30 in the chorus room. The first video club meeting of the year will occur this Thursday af after school in B14. If, you're, if you like watching or making movies, this is the club for you. We are looking for students interested in science, math, and technology to join the team. Our first meeting will be in D D D19 on Wednesday, October 12th at 3.30. Bring a friend and see what it's all about. Any questions? See Ms. Chilinski. So CUSCON is a board game convention hosted annually in Syracuse. CUSCON featured a 1,000 plus gaming library, a 24 hour gaming area, some wonderful events, a vendor hall, and a discussion panel of some leading figures in the gaming industry. Some of those amazing special guests were Daniel D David Diaz, who has worked on games like Halo and Resident Evil and shows like WandaVision and Watchmen. Danielle Reynolds, heads, head of games, kids gaming it, design and development of underdog games. Jonathan Gilmore, who created games like Dead of Winter, Vault Wars, and Kids on Bikes, which will certainly feel like you are entering Stranger Things. Bobby West, game designer and associate creative director for Story Machine Games. Michael DeVito for Third World Studios, comedian and designer Grant Lyon, and many more. The weather there was great, but I'm not sure about today, but let's check with Paige. Today is going to be mostly sunny and tomorrow is going to be breezy and warm. Today we will have a high of 70 degrees and a low of 48 degrees. Tomorrow we will have a high of 70 degrees and a low of 56 degrees. And I'm Paige with your weather. and I were able to interview Danielle and Grant when our English 10 class went to CUSCON on a field trip on September 30th. The first interview is with Danielle Reynolds. We got to talk to her about what it's like being a girl in the gaming industry and making a lot of strides for the women in the LGBTQ communities. Okay, so first of all, like, say your name and like what you do in the board game industry. Okay, so my name is Danielle Reynolds and my full-time job is I am the head of kids game design and development at Underdog Games. But also, I have a podcast. It's called Game Design Unbox, Inspiration of Publication. I'm also on the board for Unpub and Tabletop Gay Mers. Uh, also, I do volunteer work for Women in Games International, as well as for the Tabletop Mentorship Program. And there's probably one more I'm forgetting. I do a lot of things in our industry. Yeah. So, first question. Um, what is it like being a woman in the board game industry? It is both great and also kind of weird because you walk into like networking situations and you see maybe like five to twelve girls like it, it's just not a lot of us which is unfortunate and we do go through some unfortunate hurdles such as uh, one of my friends Erica Juarez is like a very uh, 
prolific game designer as a female, and she now works for Spin Master Games, but when she was first starting out, she would co-design with this guy named Daryl Andrews, who's also a really great designer. Both of them were married, but everyone at conventions always assumed that they were romantically linked together. And so people will always make assumptions based off women, or they would go like, oh, um, like, how are you here right now? Don't you have kids? And she's like, well, yes. And they're like, well, where are the kids with? And he's like, my husband. And they're like, oh, that's so sweet. Your baby. And I'm like, you can't babysit your own kids. Like, when you have kids, it's 50-50 split. Like, the husband, he's not a babysitter. Right. And so, like, girls have to deal with that. Guys don't have to deal with that, which is super unfortunate. Also, when you're a girl, especially if you're cute and not incredibly... Well, I'm outgoing, so I will have people message me on social media, and they will make passes at me at conventions, and that's something that doesn't happen to men as often. So, like, you have to go through a lot of that stuff, which is unfortunate, but also in order to, like, be in the industry, and then once you're, like, up higher, you start to not have to deal with that quite as much. And with me being gay, I actually don't have to deal with as much of it as the straight girls do. So, <laughs> it actually kind of works well for me. Next, we got an interview with Grant Lyon. He's a comedian as well as a gamer. Plus, he has a very big social media platform on TikTok. But he ha wasn't always a gamer. He started as an athlete in college. Say your name and like what you do in the board game industry. Uh, I'm Grant Lyon. Uh, I do a lot of different stuff in the board game world. I uh, make videos on TikTok about board games and have gotten popular there. I also design board games, so I have one published and more coming out. And I also write for other board games. So, yeah. So, what was the transition like from being a college athlete to, be, like, being in the industry? Yeah. Um, you know, I think being a, an athlete prepares you for certain things. Like, you got to be determined. you got to be perseverant. you got to work hard. All of those things that you learn through being part of a team help you in anything that you're going to do in life. And so, I think a lot of that, you know, I also have thick skin because I had coaches yelling at me for my whole life. And so, now when someone's like... You know, that game sucks. I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'll yeah. just I'll just come up with a better one. Okay, cool. Yeah. And um, how do you like to include comedy in your games? I want there to be funny experiences in the games I design. I want people to bring their own sense of humor into it. Mm -hmm. Like we all, you know, there are plenty of games where it's like the card is funny, but did I really do anything that's that funny? No, the card that somebody else wrote is, is where it's funny. I want my games to have like an open-endedness to them so that you can bring your own sense of humor. You can you can put the jokes into the game. And yeah, the, the game might give you a little structure or hold your hand, but you get to feel funny. My first game, one of the things that uh, somebody said about it one time that made me really proud was like, oh, I don't think I'm funny, but this game made me feel funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thanks for talking. All right, so I'm here with three members of the boys' soccer team at ESM. We have Evan DeBurgis, Parker Gamble, and Anel Soljic. Uh, you guys have had, again, another incredible season. What do you guys say would your, is your favorite moment from the season so far? Uh, well, my favorite moment, playing Vestal at half. We're down 2-0. They're ranked higher, higher than us in the state rankings. And we had a big halftime talk and came out, ended up winning the game 4-3 uh, in overtime. Um, I'd say my favorite moment was definitely playing care fun game. Obviously, that's a special game to be on with, but to come out with a win 2-1 two, two against Beville, that's a big game. For me, my favorite moment was beating JD 2-0 and getting the first goal for us to help us win. All right, and speaking of JD, you guys have a big game league championship on Thursday. How important is it that you guys have a big student section? Uh, it's very important. I mean, we're looking to get everyone in the school out there. Uh, Every time we play GED, it's a big deal, and I'd say everyone in the school should show out to support us against these rivals. Everyone wants to beat JD, come help support us. Yeah, I agree. I mean, JD's obviously ESM's biggest rival. Um, you know, they, they pack their stands for when we go, so let's pack the stands for when we play, and um, let's get a win. Let's do that as well. And now for this. Over the weekend, the football team lost to Horseheads 40 to 20 and the boys' soccer team lost 1-10 to to Aquinas. The boys' cross-country team placed 7th out of 14th at the Chittenango Invitational. 
John Corsi had a time of 18.44 and placed 22nd out of 156 runners. The gymnasts split an invitational on Saturday with two wins and two losses. Madeline Marker led the team with an impressive 27 in the all-around showing strong performances in each event. Allie Graham also shined in the all-around scoring 26 points. Maddie Beers hit her personal best on, the on both floor and vault. Ellie Mancini showed strong performances on three individual events, including the 8.2 on floor. The boys varsity volleyball team lost a tough battle last night to powerhouse CNS, three games to one. The Spartans were led by Austin Betts, who recorded 12 kills and five blocks. Cole Thomas added 15 kills, and Donovan Randall added 40 assists. Field hockey plays at New Hartford at home at 6.15. The girls' soccer team plays at CBA at 5. Besides the solo interviews, we as a class got to go into a panel interview with all these amazing people and heard some advice and ideas behind some of their famous games. It was a lot of fun to experience and it could help jumpstart some kids who might want to get into this business. When QSCon comes around next fall, you should definitely check it out. So for me and everyone here at Morning Show, have a terrific Tuesday.